Hi everybody, today's video is going to talk about some different math properties that we can use when we're solving problems. And properties are just rules that help us solve problems more efficiently. And believe it or not, you actually use these properties probably without even realizing it because you are looking for ways to help put together numbers in a more efficient way that makes sense. So in fifth grade, we're going to talk about four main properties, the commutative property, the associative property, the identity property, and the distributive property. This video is going to look a little more closely at the first three. So let's start with the commutative property. The commutative property says that the order of your add-ends or factors, that means you're adding or multiplying, might change, but your sum or your product stays the same. So this property is all about the order. And a quick memory trick is to look at the first two letters. CO, I like to remember, stands for change order. So that helps to remind me that the commutative property is all about changing the order of my numbers. So for example, in addition, I might have 17 plus 3, and I can say that that's exactly the same as 3 plus 17. It doesn't matter if the 17 comes first, like it is on the left, or second, like it is on the right, because my answer is still going to be 20. Same thing is true about multiplication. I have 4 times 3 equals 3 times 4. I know that my product is going to be 12, whether I have the 4 as my first factor or as my second factor. So the commutative property is all about changing the order when you're adding or multiplying, and that doesn't make a difference to the sum or the product. Now the associative property works very similarly, but this one is all about the grouping of your add-ends or your factors. So the way that those numbers are grouped might change, but your sum or your product still stays the same. And a little memory trick is that the people you associate with are the people that you're grouped with or you hang out with. So that helps me to remember that the associative property is all about grouping. So some examples of this would be like saying, I could group the eight plus the nine first and then add one, or I could group the nine plus the one and then join that to the eight. Either way, my sum is going to be 18. With the multiplication example, I could group the six and the two first and multiply that by five, or I could group the five and the six first and then multiply that by two. Either way, my product is going to be 60. Now it's important to point out that you'll notice the order is exactly the same as it is on the left as it is on the right. In other words, the eight comes first in both addition examples, the nine is in the middle in both addition examples, and the one is at the end in both addition examples. That's another way we can tell that this is just representing the associative property because the order of the digits stayed the same, just the parentheses or the groupings changed. Now with the identity property, that's all about keeping your sum or your product the same as your addend or your factor. And the way to do that would be by adding a zero or multiplying by one. And I like to remember this by thinking that the numbers want to keep their identity or keep their value exactly the same. So in order to do that, they have to add or change by something that's not going to change the number. So 24 plus zero is 24 because the only way we can keep that add end to stay a 24 is by adding nothing to it. And 33 times one stays 33 because the only number we can multiply by and keep our answer the same is one. So adding a zero or multiplying by one keeps your sum or your product exactly the same. Now the distributive property is used to share factors or divisors between chunks. We're going to look at that more closely in a separate video, but I wanted to give you a quick refresher of the commutative, associative, and identity properties because you'll be using those all throughout the year. Thanks for watching.